Hello everyone, um, welcome to Barn Benches interview series. Today we have with us the Honorable Justice Shaji Pichali. Justice Chali was a judge of the Kerala High Court from April 2015 to uh, May 29th this year. Um, thank you, sir, for agreeing to speak with us and for being thank a you, part of uh, Barn Benches interview thank series. You, uh, so, first of all, um, you've had 37 years in the legal profession, yes. almost 30 years as a lawyer. And 29 then, years as a lawyer. And then eight, more than, little more than uh, eight years, eight as, a years judge. as a judge. Uh, so, how has it been the last three weeks, you know, to not put on your gown and rush to court every morning? Uh, initially, you know, I was, uh, I used to be very punctual. You know, I start from here by 8.25, 8.30, I reach the court in five minutes. So, the first date was a little bit difficult. So, I, what I thought was, I should uh, break that punctuality first. <laughs> uh, so, I went for exercise, came a little late okay. and I took my breakfast very late. Like okay. that, you know, to get over that. But uh, in the afternoons, uh, I was finding, you know, a uh, little bit of uncertainty, you know. That's a natural feeling coming. But then to get over that, I come and read. That's the way okay. law books uh, and other journals I read. Okay. That's how, you know, I try to get over that. Okay. Slowly getting over now. So, still keeping in touch with the legal field definitely, as much definitely. as you can. Very interesting. Okay. So, that every day there will be something interesting, you know. Yeah. Judgments will be the Supreme Court judgments, various high courts judgments will be the. Okay. So, every day is an interesting day. Okay, sir. Um, from what I've gathered, you hail from a completely non-legal background. Yes. So, was law always the plan, the dream or did you have any other aspirations? No, law was my dream, you know. Okay. Some other, I developed a, such a passion. You know, in fact, I got admission for post-graduation in Maharaja's College in Naglo. Uh, during that year, that's 82. The admission of uh, law college started only in December 1982. So, till that time I was doing my post-graduation. Discontinued that and joined for law. Okay. Uh, uh, so, like you said, you did your graduation and everything in Ernakulam itself. Ernakulam, Maharaja's College. Yeah. And Ernakulam Law College is a stone's throw away from uh, where we are sitting correct. right now as well. Uh, and you enrolled in, as an advocate and started your practice in 1986, I believe, January 1986. Uh, January 26, 1986. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Republic the, Day, we okay. enrolled as lawyers, you know. <laughs> then um, there used to be two enrolments, then a council had only two enrolments in eight, one year. Per year. Uh, per okay. year. Okay. Uh, so, uh, speaking about your career as a lawyer, I think uh, the Advocate General at your farewell reference and mentioned how, um, and I'll quote him, the path to success is twice as hard for a first-generation lawyer. Um, do you agree with the statement as far as your experience goes? As in, uh, did your non-legal background ever feel like it held you back in some way in college or professionally? Never, never. I tell you, because I studied here from first standard onwards, I, I had my edu entire education in government institutions, you know. Uh, first of all, in uh, SRVH is still 10th standard, then in Maharaja's college and then in law college. I had a lot of friends, you know. Okay. I was very passionate in making friends. It never had any barrier. Okay. Uh, when I became a lawyer also, I used to go and talk to even the oldest lawyer in the high court. And just okay. Ishwarayar was the... And many very, very senior lawyers were there. Then it was a habit for the lawyers to go and meet them and talk to them. They will tell you how to present in court cases. Okay. Where when they, if they have seen you, you know, performing in court, they will tell you the drawback I had. Uh, you know. Okay. Uh, uh, how were your initial years as a lawyer? Um, and how was your time as the president of the KHCA? I think initial years as a lawyer and at the end of your uh, time as a lawyer, just a lawyer was when you became the president of the KCA. How is that span of time? How did it go in that direction? So, you know, I was I was a very active member of the association. I never stood for the elections. That's it. From the very beginning, I was a very active member of the association. Okay. I used to participate in every programs of the association, sports or culture or whatever it is. I used to. You know, 2014, I thought uh, that uh, my friends were persuading me to stand for the election. As a president, I thought uh, I'll just try, you know. Okay. And my opponent was a senior advocate. It was a very tough election. Oh. And, uh, normally, the election to the High Court Bar Association, the preparatory work starts four months before. Can you believe? 
that's and that's... you have to start uh, you know canvassing and go and meet every lawyer senior lawyers and uh, it's Absolutely. a tough task you know to become a president of the high court education so can you imagine <laughs> uh, and it was after 29 years as you said that in 2015 that you were elevated as an additional judge um how did that happen uh, did you always want to be a judge uh, what made you answer that call to judgeship uh, see in fact i was uh, much earlier in 2008 my bio data was taken but it was considered along with others you know so uh, later it came uh, you know when justice ashok bhushan was the chief justice here he was an acting chief justice here when he invited me to join the bench and uh, got my bio data and then i was a president and um, uh, you know i cannot say that i was not uh, inclined to be a judge you know anybody in the profession uh, who want to serve the uh, state or the nation would like to become a judge you know you can write judgments your own ideas uh, on the base on the based on the legal background and the uh, you know law you will have to render judgments that's something uh, different from advocacy advocacy is different and you, know, you can argue any point but as a judge you will have to confine yourself to mostly if there is a law on that point you will have to find out judgments are there you will have to find out but there's no barrier for a lawyer it's, uh, different absolutely you know, uh, um speaking of appointments as judges uh, what are your thoughts on the collegium system in general um do you think it breeds nepotism in the judiciary or anything of that you, sort you cannot say that you cannot say that there is a clear selection procedure you know adopted you cannot say that the uh, government or the uh, parliament or anybody is uh, you know overlooked while the judges are appointed that's not correct because a clear procedure is there first of all the chief judge sends a list to the state government state government sees that it passed on to the governor governor then sends it you know it is considered by the supreme court sent to the central government also central government also considers it so you can they are elected representatives of the people as elected representatives of the people they are considering this name if they are objecting it their objection will be considered there is a clear cut procedure made by the honorable supreme court in that regard yes. so that you cannot say that it's completely you know a democratic process is not adopted in the selection procedure that's not correct okay always when representative people to representative they are representing the people in the parliament they are representatives of a particular constituency whatever they are saying in parliament they are representing the people like that the government the the, the elected body is considering these names That's so you true. cannot say that there is complete elimination you know or a democratic process is thwarted that's not correct that is true um there's also been a lot of criticism on the other side that the central government is sitting on uh recommendations and they're selectively clearing uh recommendations for um uh, appointments and for transfers uh, what is your take on that see normally when uh, 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 uh selection that means as a supreme court uh, sends it to the government or the government is considering that after the supreme court takes a decision on that normally they may be having their own procedure but uh, uh, the the any other Uh, you know drawback is there for the particular individual it is for them it is their lookout they have their own machinery to do that uh, i do not know whether any other selective method is done by them to eliminate people on the basis of something else okay that is yeah that is true um now moving on to when you were a judge at the kerala high court um you played a very active role in the computerization committee and this was also during the pandemic time when courts were virtually forced to move into the virtual arena to do almost all of its functions um could you talk us through that experience a bit was it a difficult task to execute in such a short period of time see computerization committee was there in the high court then i was not a member i was made a member of the computerization committee in the year 2018 when uh, justice rishikesh roy was the chief justice here the committee was there and very passionate people were there in the committee just just, just like uh, justice jay shankar nambiya justice yes. mustak justice raja justice raja is a technocrat also he is basically an engineer very much interested and i joined them in 2018 you know then we uh, started thinking of making modules and I started doing that how to you know uh, make the basic or fundamental uh, things right, in order right. to computerize and then the online filing everything then right. i could contribute also 
joining with them with respect to the other factual aspects in order to prepare the modules yes uh, and uh, you know during the pandemic it was so easy for us because three or four days we started it you know online video uh, course we started in three or four days we started uh, i mean the kerala must be one of the first states uh, yes. you know high courts to start the uh, online courses Uh, do you think that switch was particularly easy for Kerala because you already had built that foundation? Uh, ah, it was easy. Foundation. It was easy. Foundation was the only thing is that uh, I think the lawyers also initially the work was uh, you know uh, not too much of work were the but uh, you know initially the lawyers had the you know apprehension you know but they were apprehensive whether they will be able to participate in these online proceedings. Later they realized that so easy. and it is also convenient for them to sit somewhere you know in a in a decent place or office room and do this instead of coming to the court so all i become adapted to all this system online system that's good. even old lawyers you know very old lawyers are practicing you know 86 87 year lawyers yes they find it very convenient that's true um, according to you what are some of the biggest benefits and drawbacks as well of um, digitizing courts Uh, the benefit is that uh, anybody can participate in the proceedings like you know uh, anybody can enter the clients can enter newspaper can enter and find out what is happening in the court people you know they just uh, read newspapers and uh, arrive at conclusions or they see some movies and they you know think that this is how the court works that's not the reality you know it's something very that's artificial true. you see in movies and uh, If reading papers they will not realize what is happening here they can find out what is happening in a court how the cases are argued reference to law should be the people will be thinking you know one sensational case comes you know they will think that this should go in a manner like this but there are various situations like that how the court deals with it court will have to look into the law the procedure and then arrive at its own conclusions looking into the papers you know absolutely i don't think court has failed you know even in a gruesome murder case where there was evidence was very little the court arrived its, its conclusion looking into the papers documents and material objects you know true true uh, um with live streaming i think that's what you were speaking about and right now with live streaming comes uh, you know uh, even off the cuff remarks and observations of judges get uh, reported on and get widely critiqued on social media quite a lot um what is your take on this do you think there is a need to curb such uh, conduct on social media see this happens you know why the judges are not very you know they are not aware when they are uh, making this comments you know they are you know this uh, live streaming is there or they are recorded that's how it happens normally you know when time goes the judges will realize that this something is happening so we will have to get ourselves restrained from making any comments you know it's better that to do it people may take it in a different manner media may report in a different manner but uh, that is how you open up conversation with the members of the bar you may say something but if you take that sentence or those words alone one may find it you know what is this man doing there you know saying uh, something else unconnected with law but you will have to open a conversation with lawyers lawyers may say something to bring out the truth we may ask many questions yes but that individual question may have a different impact if you take it individually true, true. but you will have to uh, take into account the entire scenario okay and then so that the lawyers also will be comfortable but when people read this you know they have a different uh, picture about it saying that why did the judge ask that question that's not the reality you know and that is true uh, um so in your opinion live streaming is is it aiding judicial accountability or does it often times have any sort of negative impact on no. um the smooth functioning of courts no nothing is there no. hybrid is you now kerala high court and almost the chief judge of india has now directed uh, you know to make it hybrid yes. you no know, the government has spent huge amounts we we'll have to utilize it also that's true it's comfortable people can see the clients can see how the lawyers perform and whether they are in court transparency is there there is no Absolutely. doubt about it there is no disruption at all i used to hear it hybrid mode okay. lawyers used to appear from delhi all other places you know okay uh, um apart from uh, digitizing and um, 
digitizing the high court there was also a significant effort to digitize the district uh, judiciary um, what were some of the uh, specific challenges that you might have faced especially considering some district courts aren't exactly in the more bigger and well connected cities uh, infrastructure was uh, problems of infra basic infrastructure were there but we could get over that now the fund is allotted by the supreme court you know large funds are allotted by the supreme court uh, to make the infrastructure uh, very perfect you know and then go for this uh, connectivity everything uh, generators additional power supply all those things are dedicated supply to the courts okay. these things are there now there's no problem at all it is uh, gaining a very good momentum okay so it's... and the district court uh, the computer committee has directed as well as the chief justice have directed the district courts also to keep this open you know okay and many role call works that's a time consuming process in a law so far as the district judiciary is concerned role call is the you have to call uh, maybe 150 cases or uh, you know 200 cases a day yes. that takes most of the time now the, the online is there the people don't have to rush to the court and uh, you know courts are very small actually a big one to contain mm -hmm. this kind of lawyers you know the absolutely you can see that in the rush to the district yeah, courts yeah, even that's correct. in their nakulam uh, small court rooms that's not sufficient to contain the lawyers yes so that is a uh, one method of getting over that also is there absolutely um at the kerala high court you were also uh, the head of the jj committee i think yes. juvenile justice committee um what are some of the things that you believe needs to change in that juvenile justice sphere from your experience in the committee see the juvenile justice committee is one constituted on the basis of a directive issued by the supreme court each high courts will have to constitute a committee i was made a, then it was a single committee i was made a committee uh, you know chairperson of the committee in the year 2018 uh, when justice anthony dominic became the acting chief justice so he asked me to take over that committee that so it was very you know uh, very satisfying it was for five years i was doing that later when the new chief justice justice manikumar came justice manikumar wanted to extend this uh, you know uh, two other judges justice anu shivra and justice sarun were added to this okay. committee we were working in tandem you know and we were uh, during even during the pandemic we were inspecting all these uh, institutions through video uh, oh, okay. video we used to ask them to take us everywhere including the compound uh, the rooms everywhere and then find out whether they are in properly in order we visit also whenever we are going in a particular direction we visit the homes mm -hmm. and find out that the children are happy there and we have suggested many things including planting of trees keeping the compound clean and you know uh, the the in order to uh, tap the resources of the children to do many things cultural activities sports and they are conducting it every year government is also the uh, the director and secretaries are also happy because we are overseeing it yes. and we are monitoring it they are also very happy once in a while you know we ask the minister also request the minister and um, other department officials to come in on video and then participate in the proceedings with the previous minister the present health minister who is also the social justice department manning the they all participated in the meetings okay uh, then we make our own suggestions time bound actions we suggest repeated uh, you know request made from the high court if it's not being done okay. and district level also we have a committee they monitor and then report back and if there is any deficiency immediately we write they look into that government and uh, government looks into that and do the necessary so there's prompt action from prompt the prompt action is the prompt action is okay. so we were all very happy you know committee members also very happy because we were able to do something that level for the children also that makes sense um now it's been 37 years and how have you seen the bar evolve and how have you seen the legal profession evolve over these years um uh, very interesting profession it is you know every day you uh, find something new as as a lawyer beginning uh, as a beginner lawyer first generation the family uh, initially you may find it difficult to find out the law you know which are law involved but what i used to do is whenever there a, a, a case comes to me i used to refer the barracks you know wherever uh, there is something i used to refer to the provisions of law and then start preparing it you cannot read the law books like a story book That's you know true. whenever you get a case you get adapted to that that was my approach entire uh, 
statute i go through and then find out which are the law uh, laws applicable and then draft a very interesting provision in every day you are engaged and you know soon or three or four years you start getting work you know you find it difficult to you know adjust the time uh, you know yes especially when i was in kochi and i had a lot of friends you know my friends helped me actually to build up law very well okay uh, uh, what about uh, lawyers now how have you seen your um, members in your community evolve from when you started in the late 80s to now in 2023 how have lawyers adapted and evolved over that time see initially that i told you earlier you know when we all came uh, to high court or wherever district courts we used to go there was a, you know we used to go and meet the senior lawyers talk to them and find out i think that is absent now that's one okay. thing uh, i really find you know whenever there was a lawyer standing senior lawyer standing behind us if we are sitting in a seat we will immediately give a seat that's all gone okay uh, people should i don't know i am not uh, you know finding fault with these people but uh, you know the time changes and many thing also changed you know okay uh, um what is your advice for new up and coming lawyers in this situation uh lawyers are very young, there are very good lawyers now very good young lawyers are the lady lawyers are the very good they are very good you know uh the problem i find is that you know uh instead of uh, you know looking into the provisions of the statute that's what i feel they will find out the uh, you know proposition of law from the judgments of the high court and supreme court and many a time they miss the facts you know facts relating to that case and they will rely upon these judgments right that's not the correct approach first of all one will have to find out what is the law involved right provision of law one will have to look into and then find out whether these facts fit into the particular judgment uh, otherwise lawyers are very good very good lawyers are there now okay now that you retired from service as a judge uh, what is your take on judges taking up post retirement jobs you know these are all uh, first of all i am not against it i am not against it for the basic reason that judges knows well the method of adjudication you know to follow the basic principles you know just like natural justice hear the other side hear them consider the evidence right. these are all known to the judges only that is why uh, if the judges are eliminated from that process you know after you know all these post human rights commission or uh, log ayukta log ayukta the adjudication method may not be that correct right the judges are you know the, through their vast experience they know how to tackle situations how to deal with a particular factual situation sensitive situations how to apply the law this will be absent totally you know uh, if the judges are not uh, you know taking up that post and uh, right there's nothing wrong people uh, say many things but i don't think those are all correct you know okay. many people were saying that immediately after my retirement the government has said that i'll be made some commission member or commission chairman <laughs> nobody asked me i never asked anybody <laughs> these are all right. fake news you know right uh, right uh, so what is next for justice chali can we expect to see you back in court maybe as a practicing lawyer yeah i plan to do that okay mm. uh, i plan to do that i uh, plan to go to delhi and find out make an attempt to find uh, you know uh, practice there it's okay. a tough process you know as good as uh, a beginner lawyer but i want to try that some spark is there still so i thought i'll just uh, try to find out whether it's possible for me to practice there so i am planning to go there okay uh, well very good luck with that sir and thank you so much for speaking thank you, with thank us thank you very much subscribe to our youtube channel and click the bell icon